Good evening, my name is Rob Mitchell. I'm from Widnes. I'm not. I just heard it got a big cheer before and I just wanted a bit of love. <laughs> I come from St. Helens, and believe me, no one ever cheers you when you come from fucking St. Helens. Are you from St. Helens? No. <laughs> oh. Is there anybody from St. Helens? <laughs> no. <laughs> there is some, they just won't admit it. <laughs> uh, but I was born in Liverpool, actually, many, many years ago, and I was a very difficult birth. Fucking my mum wasn't laughing, believe me. I was a very difficult birth because I had a massive head. It was literally the size it is now, but without the beard. <laughs> my mum always says, you were a beautiful baby, but a bastard to give birth to. <laughs> I got stuck. So what they had to do, it was an emergency uh, caesarean, right? But the problem was, when, because I had a massive head, when they were cutting my mum open, they cut me across the top of my head. And I came out like a money box with a slot in my head. <laughs> so it was quite traumatic for her. But we've talked about it quite a bit over the years. We've joked about it. We've compared scars. <laughs> <laughs> but I was, uh, I was always very self-conscious. It's kind of grown round to the side now. You can see it a bit. But when I was young, I was really self-conscious. Uh, um, so I always used to grow my hair over it so, so nobody could see it. And I think my mum feels the same about hers. <laughs> <To be honest. laughs> I, mean, I, I don't mean she grew her hair over it. Well, it was the 70s. <laughs> Maybe she did. <laughs> but I've noticed now she's in her 70s. She's started, decided to grow her boobs down over her so no one can see it. <laughs> Poor dad. <laughs> Uh, my mum and dad are still together. It was their anniversary last week. 51 years together, which is incredible. It's great. Uh, and what's amazing is, until just before Christmas, my mum and dad had never spent a night apart from each other in, like, over 55 years. Now, that's incredible, because they clearly fucking hate each other. <laughs> oh, honestly. Can't stand the side. It's a long time, isn't it? 50-odd years. But what happened? They're very different, my mum and dad. My mum's very feisty, always got a lot to say. And my dad's very placid, very laid back, very quiet. But what happened just before Christmas? Uh, my dad was ill. Uh, he had a stroke, so he was in hospital for a few days. And he's all right now, but it's quite serious at the time. He, he couldn't communicate. He, he couldn't speak, right? What was funny, my mum didn't even notice for three fucking days. <laughs> oh, he can never get a word in edgeways. She never shuts the fuck up. And I said to her, did you not notice, ma'am? And she said, oh, it's what he would have wanted. I said, what do you mean? And she said, oh, well, he doesn't like to make a fuss. <laughs> yeah, but he might like a bit of medical attention. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> <You> know. <laughs> but it's lovely, my dad. My dad's always been a bit of a hero of mine, a very quiet man, but a very lovely man. He got me into comedy when I was younger and everything. And I remember, I remember the first time I ever heard my dad swear. He never swears, my dad. I think it's the only time he has. And that was here in Liverpool. He took me to the match to watch Liverpool. Uh, we used to go quite a lot in the 80s, and we used to sit down in what they call the paddock by the dugout. And we'd get there early and get the, the opposition, when they had to wander around the pitch, I'd get their autographs. And there was one match, it was against Tottenham Hotspur, and, and there was a player called Garth Crook, so you might know, do you know who he is? He's sometimes on a Saturday. He's walking past, and I asked him for his autograph, uh, and he was quite rude. He said, no, I haven't got time for that, lad. I've got a match to pre prepare for it. He was quite rude. He quite upset me. And my dad said, don't worry. It's all right. Come on, son. You've got some other autographs. And then about half an hour into the match, there was a player for Liverpool called Sammy Lee, built like a tank, smashed into Garth Crook, sent him about 10 foot in the air, and really injured him. I think he broke his leg. And the stretcher in him off, and my dad said, as he's coming past me, my dad said, yeah, give us that book, lad. So he took it off me. And he went, oh, you dickhead, you're going to sign that now, you lazy bastard. <laughs> Fucking only time I heard him swear. <laughs> but he's lovely, he's, he's lovely, my dad, he really is. I get on very well with him. My mum is different, my mum is very feisty. My mum used to be a dinner lady at my school when I was a little kid, right? Which was a fucking nightmare. I hated it. I mean, I didn't mind her working there after a while. But it was just all the name calling that went on when she first started. It, it was horrible. And we had it every day, every day. All the pupils, we'd get into the hall, we're queuing up for lunch. Shutters had come up, and my mum would be stood there with a spotted dick <laughs> serving the <laughs> chips. <laughs> and then it would start. 
oh, look at the fat piggy. Thunder thighs, jabber the gut, who ate all the pies, and then everyone would join in. You fat bastard, you fat bastard. It was horrible. In the end, I'd say, Mum, please, call me what you want when we're at home, but not here. Oh, they were horrible. Okay, now, honestly, I was, I was frightened of my mum when I was young. There was two things. When I was growing up in the 80s, there were two things I was frightened of. My mum and Purple Aki. <laughs> and that was it. And I was, I, I got, oh, I'm, <laughs> I used to get really wound up about it. I remember, I remember I got that frightened. I wouldn't go home from school on my own. So I ended up speaking to one of my teachers and I went to a, a kind of staunch Catholic school in St. Helens and I spoke to my teacher about it. I said, Father, have you heard of the man they call Purple Aki? I'm really frightened of him. I, I don't want to be touched by him. <laughs> But I said, the thing is, nobody's ever seen him. So I don't think he's real. He can't exist if no one's seen him, can he? And he said, son, listen, I don't believe in... I, I, I've never seen God. But I know he's out there watching my every move. <laughs> and one day, we'll come face to face. What kind of thing is that to say to someone who's scared of purple like he's out there watching me? Bloody hell. But kids, I know kids nowadays still talk about it. I'm a school teacher, and kids still go on about him nowadays. A couple of years ago, the school I was working at was 90 years old, so they had a bit of a celebration. And what they had to mark the 90th anniversary, they made like this little kind of pond, little lake in the front. Uh, and it was the year that David Attenborough turned 90. And if you remember, Attenborough had a boat named after him, didn't they? They called it Boat him at Boatface. <laughs> Only they didn't, they changed it. So because of that, what they decided to do, all the pupils made a little boat, named it, and sailed it across this pond thing. And it was, a, it was a really good day. It was a big day. They had press there. They had the mayor from St. Helens was there and everything. And this kid comes along with his boat, and he said, this is my boat. I call it Aki McPurpleface. <laughs> and I looked at it, and, and Aki, he'd been in the Liverpool Echo that week, and he cut out the picture of him and used it as the sails. Fucking <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> So they still, they still talk about that. Okay. So yeah, I am, I am a teacher. Um, and I like to have a bit of a laugh and a joke with the kids. I started teaching in Liverpool about 20 years ago now. And I remember my first lesson. First day, and I was, I was teaching my first lesson. And it was going really well, right? Until a lad sat at the back of the class, decided to hold up a picture he'd just drawn of a massive cock. <laughs> Magnificent, as Alex Ferguson would say, apparently. <laughs> But he holds it up and he says, look, sir, it's your mam. Cheeky bastard. And I, I had a look. It was nothing like me, mam. <laughs> my mam hasn't even got curly hair for a start. <laughs> so he lost marks for that. But back then, being a bit of a young, naive teacher, rather than ignore this immature comment, I added my own. I said, that'll explain why she smells like your dad's arsehole. <laughs> so, yeah. Now, I've said that a few times at comedy nights since, and believe me, you say that in front of a room full of adults, it always gets a big laugh. But believe you me, you try and say that in front of a class of five and six year olds. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they weren't laughing. But, like I said to the offset inspector observing my lesson at the time, <laughs> so listen, mate, if these kids can't take it, they shouldn't dish it out, should they? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I no longer work in a primary school teaching little kids. <laughs> I now work in a secondary school teaching little bastards. <laughs> no, they're great. I work in a school in Manchester at the moment, and, and they are a bit mad. I was doing a, I'm a design technology teacher, but a couple of weeks ago I was doing a cover lesson for a geography teacher who's off at the moment, and they were doing about farming, about agriculture, and it was a lesson on irrigation. So I said, what do you know about irrigation? What can you tell me about it? And this little lad puts his hand up and he says, yeah, my dad's told me all about irrigation. He says it's ruining the country and they should all bugger off back <laughs> home where they came from. <laughs> Dickhead. <laughs> said, who's your dad? Tommy Robinson. <laughs> prick. <laughs> but um, I, I, did, I got in trouble myself a couple of weeks ago when the exams were on. Have we got any teachers in tonight? <laughs> got the teachers. Right. Did you know when a GCSE exam is on, you can't take the exam paper out of the hall? Yeah, yeah I didn't fucking know that. <laughs> I got in right shit. What happened, right, it was Friday afternoon, and it was the design technology, it was my exam, right? Now, Friday afternoon last year, I'm free. It's great. So, honestly, I'm like clockwork. Every Friday, five to two, time to take a poo. 
like clockwork, honestly. And Thursday night is curry night with the lads, so by two o'clock on a Friday, that baby's sticking its head out, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I'm like, I'm like a lot of men, you know, I like to take my time over these things. I like to take a bit of reading in with me. So what I did was, the exam was just starting, I nipped in, got the exam paper, and buggered off to the bog, right? And I'm in there for a good 30 or 40 minutes, you know, I'm making the most of this. It's on work time, sat there. And honestly, well, he, we talk about difficult birth. I thought I was going to need a C-section, to be honest. It wasn't nice. But after about 30 minutes or so, there's a knock on the door. I thought, fucking hell, who's that? And I open the door, and there's three of them. The head teacher's there, right? The exams officer, and the invigilator from the hall. And the invigilator points at me, and she said, that's him, get him in quarantine. I said, don't be ridiculous. I know it stinks, but bloody hell. <laughs> It's a bit much, isn't it? She said, no, you stupid man. You've taken a paper out of the exam. You can't speak to anyone till the exam's over. Get in isolation. So they did. They put me in the isolation unit with the naughty kids. Some of these kids, I'd put there myself at the start of the day. Talk about intimidating. It was like, you know, on TV when a bent copper gets sent down <laughs> and all the inmates are after him. I was really intimidated. I had a year nine lad looking at me like that. Some kid in year eight gave me a note. It said, snitches get stitches. You ain't done anything, you dickhead. Right. And then this, this little fat year seven lad who's in there all the time slides up to me and he says, hey, sir, while you're in here, anything you want, you come and see me. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I can get you Chewy, Starburst, Haribo, anything you want. The little fucker ran the place. <laughs> So yeah, I did, it was quite, I got into a lot of trouble and I've got a, a, a letter from the exam board warning me of future conduct, black mark against my name. Don't give a shit, it was worth it. I went in with a fiver, came out with fucking loads of Haribo. <laughs> <laughs> Who's laughing now? But see, I think that this is the problem these days. I mean, when you're a teacher, it's the way kids are brought up. Kids are all right, but the way they're brought up, it's not easy. Have we got parents in tonight? Yeah. If you put, it's not easy. We're having trouble with our oldest lad at the moment. Our oldest lad is called Luke. Now, our Luke is a 17-year-old goth, right? No? <laughs> Lovely lad, but a proper knobhead. <laughs> Honestly, right? We took him out the other weekend. It was the hottest day of the year. We took him out. He turns up in his full goth kit, right? All in black. He's got his boots on. He's got his hood up over his face. He's wearing his cloak thing. And he's smoking one of these e-cigarettes. So I said, hey, up, what have you come as? Darth Vapor. It was good, right? I said, what have I told you about smoking these things, lad? And he went, oh, who do you think you are? I said, Luke, I am your father. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he fucking hates me. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm a, I'm a responsible parent. Um, got two younger ones. They're only five and six. I can remember the name then, but the, their age. But they said to me today, he said, Daddy, can we come and watch you tonight? He said, we love funny things. We've never been to see you do comedy. Can we come and watch? I was like, whoa, not that. would be completely inappropriate. I said, listen, it's Liverpool. People will be drinking the funny juice. That makes mummy fall down. <laughs> I said, we'll be using the naughty words. I said, it'd be completely irresponsible to bring you in tonight. So I've just left him in the car down the road. <laughs> Fuck him. <'em. laughs> Oh, the learn. Right, this is lovely. My name is Rob Mitchell. Have a great night. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>